We have never discussed any of it since she was, I think our first and last conversation about anything to do with show business, she was nine years old. Wow. <laughs> That's pretty impressive. So she's just on her own, right? flying on her own and carving out a hell of a career, you know? Someone killed my wife. I think I did it. We're going to get you out of here. This judge, this guy is corrupt. I'm writing a huge expose. Listen, uh, Frank, let's keep this simple, okay? You just keep your mouth shut or your lights go out. You feel me? Jim Alexander. How's it going, Eric? How's it going, Aziz? Hey, good, and you? I'm doing fine. Where are you guys at? Like I'm in Los Angeles. Ah. Uh, I'm I'm baking here in Chicago. It's uh it's a heat wave out here. So <laughs> well good to good to catch up with you guys. This is so cool, Eric. Uh I can't even count how many movies I've seen with you. I mean, I don't, there's no tally for that anymore. Um, this was cool. I, I really enjoyed this film. I, I I felt like I'm gonna start with you, Aziz. Uh, it had a lot of messages, at least I took out of like uh, religious and, and political, um, you know, kind of a love story, but a hell of a thriller at the same point. You mixed in a lot of ingredients into this film. Um, tell me a little bit about it. What were you trying to kind of hint at some messages? Because I thought it was kind of interesting seeing two different culture, the di different dynamics, even in, in crazy situations like these characters are at. Thank you. Yeah, no, I appreciate it. And that, that's definitely what I was hoping to achieve. Like this movie basically is a movie that's for two kinds of audiences, whether mm. so that for the non-Muslim audience, I just want them to see that we're not different than them, that we also have dysfunctional families sometimes, that we aspire for love, for a better future, and that we don't hate people, that we love the people who are not, who are different than us. And then for the Muslim audience, I just wanted them to just, I wanted to urge them to dissociate themselves from the extremists, to basically stand up and tell them loud and clear that they do not represent us, that we are the 99%, we are the majority. That makes sense. That's kind of a truth. Eric, what'd you, got, what'd you take out of it when you first read the script and see the role, you get to mix up some things here. Uh, tell me what appealed to you about this film. It was very simple. It wasn't, it wasn't a film. It wasn't a filmmaker. It wasn't a script. It was a Mickey Rourke film. It's Eric want to be in it. I'd say, yeah, he's my pal. I'll show up. It was like that. <laughs> Mickey Rourke's in it, which, which you touch on that. Boy, I don't know how many guys, uh, films you guys done. I remember the, the Pope of Greenwich Village. That was the one back in before I was born, I think. But you guys have a long friendship uh, dating back years. How cool is it to, to work, get to work with someone decades later and and throughout like your careers kind of coming back to each other that that's pretty cool actually well you know when when you when you have long your careers like mickey and i have have, uh, have both had and you and you get to uh it's like hook up hey dude good to see you you get to do that it's really fun and it's really calm because mickey and i have a great working relationship we know how to work together as eric and mickey mm -hmm. and uh, and uh, we can do anything together and we know it. So uh, so we love seeing each other on a set, yes. Aziz, as a filmmaker, how easy is it to have these two guys part of your film? Kind of, you just let them do their thing in a sense, or, or how is that? Because that, that must be a, a cool for you as a filmmaker and you know, make it easier that they do have this working relationship and you can trust the, their work and what they're gonna do. That definitely, I mean, it was definitely intimidating uh, to have such like legends with me, but I would say they made it a lot easier. Like, I remember being nervous, stressed out, you know, I mean, just trying to finish the day. And uh, even like, especially with Eric, it was just a relief. He was always saying like, don't worry, we got this. Like, we, we never felt like I was like, oh my God, if I don't get this shot in the next 10 minutes, he's gonna walk out or something. So um, no, I think the, the fact that, you know, working with uh, Eric and, and Mickey and um, all these actors, was great because I I felt that there was some pressure off my shoulders. Mm. No, Aziz, I'm going to stay with you for a second here. Um, 
you know, in, or there's a lot of, in a sense, uh, there's prison scenes and stuff like that. You kind of have to have intel on how that stuff goes to depict it on camera to make it authentic and realistic. And I thought you did a really good job of that, sort of showing the prison life and, and what happens sort of between these sort of factions, in a sense. And uh, what sort of research did you do? Um, what sort of kind of things did you use to incorporate to the film? Because I thought it came off pretty authentically as, as I, did, I wasn't in that situation, but I imagine it would be pretty truthful to life. How do you kind of go about the research to present kind of an authentic sensibility for the viewer and for the actors even to feel like? Absolutely. I think everything that I do, I always do a lot of research that might come because I have an engineering background. So I'm all about like discipline and the scientific rigor. So I can't show something that's not 100% accurate and proven before. So for this, I actually visited some supermax facilities, even here in LA, we went to the prison, uh, the maximum uh, security uh, detention facility uh, mm. with the prison chaplain, he, wa he walked with me, we I even attended one of his services to see how the whole like, community room was organized and how inmates were able to, uh, to talk to each other, to interact with each other in a prison uh, setting. And uh, I just wanted to really make sure that whatever I depicted was, that's how it, it was. And uh, the character of Eric actually is also based on a real judge that exists. Um, his name was, I think, Judge Jefferson, that there was a similar corruption scheme between Nigeria and the US where he was taking money and in, in exchange of personal favors for his family. And so everything in the movie, I would say everything has some sort of accuracy in it. Because, and I think that's important. Ah, Eric, you like to play roles like this, right? A little bit, uh, kind of a twisted character, you know, shady characters. You, you enjoy incorporating these sort of roles, kind of the, in a sense, the villain, but doesn't appear like it maybe to many others. I, I enjoy all, so many of the roles you've done, but I feel like you, you have a sort of a liking to these. Well, thanks for the kind words. I like <laughs> playing bad guys. You know, bad guys are more fun. And we also almost always get to die. So you get a great death scene and you get and you get and you get to uh, to uh, to steal money and cars and lives along the way. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> well put. I like that summary. I think it capsulizes pretty much what a good villain does, right? And they never think they're a villain too, right? In, in the whole time. No. No. No, no, bad guys are not bad guys to bad guys ever. See, that's how it goes. Eric, I'm, I'm curious. Have you ever turned down a movie role? I think you have like 700, almost 650 or something. Going. I'm just wondering if you ever turn anything down. I turn down movies every single day. My goodness. How do you do this? I, I've always wondered, you, you stood out to me for to do as many projects. I'm like, do you, does this man sleep? Does he live let on me, a set? Let me, let, me, let, me, let me tell you a little story. In yeah. 1993, my, my, my wife and I had only been, been, uh, been married about a year. And she mm -hmm. says to me, um, if you could do anything every single day, what would it be, Eric? I said, I'd be on a movie set. She goes, that's not going to happen, blah, 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 blah. And then then 2003 comes, and she ten, 10 years later, and she goes, you know what? There's this new camera coming. It's an HD camera, and everybody's going to be able to own one. And I think it's going to change our system a little bit. I don't wow. know what I'm talking about yet, but blah, blah. And then 2008 came, and everybody started having them on sets. By 2010, pretty much 75% of all sets were HD now, they weren't film. So from 2010 to 2018, I got calls every day from all over the world, Eric Roberts, come be in my movie that I'm making with my camera. Now they didn't have distribution, they didn't have big budgets, they, they, they didn't have a lot of things but they were making movies. So I went and my wife and I saw the world probably three times for free and we <laughs> met movies everywhere. And we had so much fun and we met so, and it also made the business so much more personal to me than it's ever been. And that I was going into people's homes almost literally sometimes. And here we are making a movie. And, uh, and so, so, sometimes they were fantastic films. Sometimes they were not. So, so, you know, you have your cake and you eat it too. And so, so, sometimes it doesn't taste great, but it is what it is. And you have fun. And quite frankly, this is a big asset. 
I saw the world for free a couple of times and it's a beautiful place. <laughs> I'd imagine, I'd imagine there's probably not a place you haven't shot at this point. I, uh, I, that's I amazing. Really recommend it. That's amazing. You know, I, I really respect that fact that you always give every sort of role and a film opportunity, low budget, high budget. You, you've done it all in a sense. Like, I don't think there's much that you haven't done in your career. And, and I admire that fact because it, it's kind of the curiosity of a human, right? To, to try everything, to see whether it works or doesn't. But you have this life experience built of so many different films and genres and characters that many can't say they haven't tried because of whatever self, you know, doubt or just not willingness to do it. I feel like you have a willingness to try and do anything. And I think that's pretty damn awesome. I love hearing that. Thank you. And, you know, it's just, and all the roles that I get to play, I would never get to play otherwise. I mean, I, mm -hmm. I get to play everything and it is so much fun. Aziz, what's Eric like on set? Like when, when you have someone like that on set, you said he, the star power of him and Mickey, but uh, what's a takeaway that you kind of have? What did you learn from having him on set? Or what'd you learn as Eric, as a person getting to work with him? Like I said, it was just very, uh, a, cal a calming thing when I had to work with him, uh, you know, instead of just being stressed out. One thing that I remember is that, you know, sometimes I would like to, uh, get other takes or whatever. But with Eric, it was interesting because no matter, you know, what I would say, I would say action. And no matter what he was doing before, he was Judge Jude, as I said, action. And I didn't need to do another take and another take. I mean, very, with other actors, I would sometimes do a couple takes, you know, and, uh, and get different, um, ways of, of acting uh, that scene but Eric and Mickey and, and a lot a lot of these actors they didn't need uh, much direction I mean you know they're not uh, Hollywood legends for no reason they, they didn't need direction they were like just uh right then they were perfect <laughs> pros pros uh, Eric what do you you work with so many filmmakers <laughs> you probably can't even count uh what what stood out to you about Aziz what, what did you like about his filmmaking as a filmmaker and even as a person because we know how important relationships are on set you know like the to have a good set to to have the right amount of good people on set too what stood out to you about him as a filmmaker and as a person to work with well I personally prefer gentle filmmakers as opposed to hmm. tyrants. And there are a lot of tyrants. Yep. He is very gentle. He is very uh, kind to his actors. He's an actor's director. He, uh, he talks to you as if he's telling you a secret. <laughs> uh, and uh, you, 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 you respond as if you have some, some, uh, some very valuable information and you take it and you incorporate it. And uh, it's how to work. It's how to work because, you know, we're there because of our leader, the director. He is his image of a story that, that, that we're doing. So, so uh, when, they're, when they're very clear and they're very kind and they're very gentle, they have my attention as, as Aziz did. Oh, that's fantastic. Aziz, uh, what did you learn on this experience working on this film? Because uh, like we mentioned, a lot of stuff being incorporated, a lot of messages. What, after, from start to finish, that long process, now you get to kind of look back. Uh, anything that specifically stands out as maybe a life lesson or something you wouldn't do next time? Uh, what are some kind of key things that stood out to you after from this whole experience? Um, I loved the fact that we had a, an international crew and cast like we were sometimes speaking four languages on set you know wow. because we were in Morocco with French actors a Spanish crew but also Arabic you know actors and I mean Moroccan actors who spoke Arabic and of course the U.S. talent so it was always like uh, very interesting for me to be able to do that um, because everybody brought their own um, you know knowledge and, and experience and heritage in, into the game. And I think it's important. I, I would encourage everyone to do that, you know, to have a diverse uh, cast and crew. That's important. I would, I would say that's the key takeaway to never, uh, you know, forget to get as many diverse people on set as possible. Oh, it it only makes the experience better, I would say, for everyone. 
No, and it has a good feel to it too when you're watching because you get a flavor, kind of a worldwide flavor to a movie, you know? Uh, you see new parts of the world and you guys filmed it in Morocco, two uh, sections of it, right? Uh, five cities in Morocco, yes, and wow. Los Angeles. Wow, that's amazing. Eric, did you make it out to Morocco too for, for the filming? I did not. Ah, you yes. missed out. <laughs> next time <laughs> <laughs> and aziz i'm gonna stay with you for a second um what sort of movies do you want to do you want to do movies with kind of a rich cultural flavor to them that tell sort of meaningful stories in a way or at least perspectives that can be gained from it is that what you're kind of attracted to as a filmmaker and want to do more of i can yeah, answer absolutely. that question he wants to only make movies with eric roberts from here on out <laughs> well that works bring eric to, <laughs> of well, belong. True, actually i definitely enjoyed the experience with eric and i would love to do it again if he accepts <laughs> but um yeah no to, to answer also like your point uh i absolutely want to make movies that have uh an impact on trying to change the narrative around arabs and muslims in the west and my next project is actually about a true story of a female James Bond from the Middle East. And wow. it's a very fascinating story that literally is a sobering commentary on cultural alienation and the power of fear and also the fragility of the American dream. And I think when it comes out, it's going to be a very uh, hopefully successful uh, theme. Well, you got some good ideas, that's for sure. So keep on bringing them. I think it, adding new flavor and, and something, new stories is always a great thing. You know, not, not having rehashed things, <laughs> reboots all the time. Eric, is there anyone you haven't worked with that you've wanted to always work with? I, I, I mean, I can't go over a list. I think you've worked with everyone pretty much in Hollywood. Is there anyone that stood, stands out to you that you really want to work with? Or well, work if, with I, again? if I name if I name names, it'll cause a problem. So let me not name names and just say, <laughs> sure. There's a whole generation now that's out there that can act, and they're very young and they're very talented, and they're as good or better than my generation. And I want to get in 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 with them. <laughs> I, I, Interesting. I, I want them to put me in their movies. Uh, yeah, the uh, the young talent you know coming up is ass kicking good. And, uh, Why do you think so? Why do you think so? Uh, is there a specific reason you think that they're more polished or whatnot? I don't know. I think it had something to do with the crossover of reality TV. I think it mm -hmm. made 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 people more straightforward in how they act. I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm just thinking out loud. But uh, but uh, something happened, and uh, the young kids got gritty. They didn't get fake. They got tougher. And uh, I like them. I like them all. Yeah. I like that. that. That's a cool perspective. And it's true. We are more reality based than everything now in the world. It's less less sort of that actory stuff or, you know, just I think more truth to, to everything that we do, you know, and I feel like society's changing that way. My daughter's generation is mm -hmm. really good. Yeah. Yeah. Does she does she ever ask you for advice? I mean, she's got a hell of a career. She's had a heck of a career. Uh, what sort of conversations do you guys have about the industry in a sense, or you don't talk about it? We have never discussed any of it since she was, I think, our first and last conversation about anything to do with show business. She was nine years old. Wow. <laughs> That's pretty impressive. So she's just on her own, right? flying on her own and carving out a hell of a career, you know? That's we we have a whole other relationship. That's that's really cool. That's actually cool that you know the industry doesn't get in the way. And that says how proud are you of her? What what she's achieved really? Because I mean it's been pretty remarkable. Oh, uh, you know I, I don't want to be too too soppy, but I'm, I'm <laughs> head over heels in love with her whole thing. There you go. You're gonna be a, gra a grandfather too, right? I'm a I'm a I'm a two time grandfather. My yeah. uh, my uh, my 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 wife's daughter Morgan has, mm -hmm. has a two-year-old Georgia, and of course um, Emma has Rhodes, who's brand new. That's right. How, how does it feel? I'm curious. You know, uh, to to be a grandfather, uh, do you enjoy it? Is that sort of a, a different feeling that you've never had? It is weird. It's like it's like you. It's like when you get up on Christmas morning and you have all these gifts, but you don't know what they are. They're all wrapped. Where you have this little little bitty person, you don't know what it's going to be, but it's all wrapped, and that's wow. how it feels. It's a gift. It's a gift. That's well put. And finally, I'm going to wrap on this, Eric. 
I wonder when you have free time, what do you do with your life? What sort of hobbies or interests when you're not on set? I know that's part of your hobby in a sense, being on set, but is there anything else you like to delve into or just kind of get away um, from when you, when you're not on set that you enjoy doing? Well, I have horses and I have a 5,000 book library. So Damn. I'm a big reader and I'm a big writer. So that's what I do. Wow. You're a collector of books. How about that? Who knew? Yeah. Well, you have time to read them too, in between sometimes on set. So that's, that works out perfectly, right? It's perfect for what I am, a reader. Yes. Well, that's what, something I didn't know. So I, I'm, I'm happy to know that. Fantastic job, fellas. Uh, I enjoyed the film, Aziz. Uh, it's really good filmmaking there. And I thought it was, a, it was an interesting, engaging movie. It kind of keeps you yeah, on yeah, edge. Aziz. Yeah, yeah, Aziz. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And thank you for, for these, uh, these great questions. Like, I really had a good time with, well, uh, with you and with Eric answering. That, that's questions. what I tried to do. <laughs> Make it fun and easy, you know, for everyone. Yeah. Eric, admired your career. I can't wait to see you in another billion films down the road. <laughs> and I hope you two connect again, because I think that would be some really cool stuff. Oh, you cool cat. Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate it, guys. Have a good one. Enjoy the weekend. Thank you. Have a good evening.